All right. So to kick things off, thank you everybody for joining our first edition of IntentWise Connect webinars in 2024. We're very excited to have Elizabeth Green, co-founder of Jungler, an Amazon agency, here presenting on what we're calling the middle analysis, bridging the gap between ads and products and helping you to better understand performance for your business. So I think uh, we've got an exciting topic. Elizabeth spent some time preparing this, and we're very excited to see what she has to share with us today. Before we get started in the presentation, I did want to just take one minute to introduce IntentWise in case you haven't heard about us. Um, you know, we are a software provider that supports brands and agencies that sell on Amazon, Walmart, Criteo, and Instacart. And we have what is, you know, what we refer to as our e IntentWise e-commerce cloud suite of products. So that includes the IntentWise Ad Optimizer, which is a way to manage your ads using AI and rules. IntentWise Analytics Cloud, which is our comprehensive data store and pipeline. It essentially allows you to connect to all of your APIs, whether it's through Amazon, Walmart, Criteo, et cetera, pull that data in, connect it together, and visualize with beautiful dashboards and reports right out of the box. And then lastly, and our newest product is called IntentWise Explorer, which is a platform to accelerate your value extraction from Amazon Marketing Cloud without needing to write SQL. You can log in, pick the queries or audiences you want to create, and just go nuts with AMC. So it's so definitely your fastest path to uh, utilizing AMC. But if you have um, questions about IntentWise or the products we offer, go ahead and check out our website or drop me a message on LinkedIn. Happy to chat through that. And with that out of the way, I'd happy to turn it over to Elizabeth for today's agenda. Awesome. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. This is going to be um, a really, really fun one. This is a topic that we dug in a lot in 2023, something that I feel like we really solidified in our internal management structure as far as uh, how we make good advertising decisions, especially for larger brands. Um, and it's what we call, honestly, I'm the one who called it the middle analysis. If anyone has a better name, every time I present this, I keep them like, I think that makes sense to me. Uh, because it's kind of the middle analysis to us is like a layer in between looking at account metrics and then digging down into the ad console to make changes or you know intent wise or whatever sort of management structure it is that you're using to make the changes um, because there what we found when we did uh, sort of that analysis portion was that there was something missing and when you looked at the account level and you wanted to make very strategic changes um if you were in the ad console, you're a little bit too far into the weeds. If you're up at the account level, you feel like you're very removed from sort of that very tactical strategy portion. And so we've kind of developed sort of this middle layer, which we call, again, the middle analysis. And I'm going to actually go through how you can put together um, a custom middle analysis report for yourself and then how you can actually use that to analyze although I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit because when we're looking at this agenda here, uh, we're actually going to start with setting clear goals. Um, I'm going to go over this very briefly, but goals are the most important thing to understand when it is um, essentially setting very specific goals um, when it comes to improving your advertising. And then of course, we're going to get into, you know, here I call it the product performance analysis. So I'm playing around with names here. <laughs> Any feedback is welcome. Um, but we'll go through like how you actually combine the data, what do you analyze? And then like, again, how do you use that to improve your advertising? Going back over to the first portion um, when it comes to understanding goals. Awesome. Um, and we will have a Q&A portion afterwards. And I let Ryan know if anyone has any specific questions related to what I'm talking about in the presentation and needs clarification, feel free to chime in. Again, just using the chat board or if you want to do the Q&A. Um, and because I want to make sure that you guys understand these concepts as good as possible. But of course, starting out with uh, particular goals. Um, so it really all starts with goals. And I know a lot of times we have like, oh, I, I feel like I should grow or I talk to a lot of brands um, and they're like, hey, I want to do better. I want to get better. And my question is always like, OK, well, what is what does that mean? Goals are like this huge, ambiguous must continuously improve. I think it's obviously very much part of, you know, the culture of entrepreneurship with if you're an Amazon seller, that's what you are. Um, you know, it's always must improve, must get better. Where are you trying to go? And so I like when at all possible to maybe phrase things in a different way or help you kind of understand it. Uh, just really asking yourself, what am I trying to accomplish? 
what do I want? And I know even the what do I want question, I get asked that as well as a business owner and you're still like, oh, what do I want? It's like, what makes me happy? What makes me thrive? What am I trying to do? So for an example, uh, for a brand where maybe building a brand and exiting in five years is really enticing to you, that's going to come with a very specific set of goals. Um, when we we talk about um, sort of like the spend versus, versus profit spectrum, in that scenario, sort of sales growth, um, Obviously, profitable sales growth, but continuous sales growth is going to be very helpful for you in that final evaluation versus if you're building more of, say, a lifestyle brand, it's something that you don't really intend and you're simply trying to fulfill and maybe be able to quit your day job, bring your spouse home or something like that, like your goals are going to be much different. So think of it not just goals as in, I want to build myself up to a seven figure brand. I want to build myself to an eight figure brand. Hey, let's go, let's go full on. Let's go to hit the nine figure brand, right? It could be like, okay, but how do you want to get there? What do you, what do you want to accomplish on the way? So think of it much more holistically than maybe you would have thought of it. And the reason why that's really important is because saying, quote, I want to improve ads um, is really unhelpful. You got to get specific with it um, because like I could make you super profitable today by going in and pausing all of your advertising. I think all of us who've been running advertising for any length of time know that that's a really bad long-term strategy. That's not going to help you get to ultimate probably growth goals that you have. Um, so getting very specific allows you to dig into your mathematics, which again is where we're heading in this presentation. I'm going to show you a custom report, you can start digging into the mathematics. So you can look at it at a per product level, this product line, this product line. And again, we're, I'm going to show you exactly how to dig that out of your account. Um, but getting specific is going to know how far. So for example, if total A cost is crept up because of conversion rates and sales trends and everything to maybe closer, maybe you're squeaking that 20% and you're like, this is not great in terms of total A costs. Well, just saying I want to improve, improvement is 19% total A cost. Is that acceptable or do you need to get to a 15% total A cost? If you have to get to a 15% total, okay, I have to lower five points. Then the question becomes, what is the ad spend of those five points? And what does that look like in terms of spend decreases in my account? I have an actual number value to put on it. And then it becomes where within the account can I find this number value to decrease my ad spend? It becomes much more actionable and tactical instead of this sort of broader must improve. You know, you can improve a little, you can improve a lot. And it really depends again, but improvement should be working towards goals that you've already defined, which is why um, setting goals first is the most important thing. Um, and the goals really, again, help you define where you fall in this. And again, I'm kind of setting the context for us to go in and then evaluate those reports so you can bring this context to how you're going to be looking at these reports. Um, but really when it comes to advertising, and honestly, I probably should have put this slide first, it, it's more about the where that it is the what, because good ad management is simply good ad spend control. That's really what it is broken down to a fundamental level. So when we're talking about the where do we fall, um, ad spend and how you control it um, really help. There's this dichotomy with the advertising because when it comes to advertising, we're really paying for eyeballs on the product. The more eyeballs we can get on the product, um, the more of those people, you know, click the rate are going to visit the listing, conversion rate, the more people are going to purchase and you get that positive flywheel effect. However, if you completely charge off into the growth, pay for more eyeballs as much as humanly possible, then you end up with a, again, ad spend control, a whole lot of ad spend. And if you really want to make sure you're maintaining profits, if you continuously push um, costs up through increasing ad spend, you're going to end up with a problem. And so you're probably going to have to decrease um, your ad spend to be able to get more profitable. So it's really managing these dichotomy and just recognize that if you run full force in either one of these directions, either going after sales growth or going after increasing profitability, um, Typically speaking, now I'm going to try and give you some tactics and how possibly maybe you can get both, you have your cake and eat it too. Um, but really in a lot of ways, you're giving up 
of one of these. So if I decrease my ad spend to increase my profits, I'm giving up on some visibility. So therefore I'm most likely decreasing sales growth as well. Um, I, it's uh, just something, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna add, I think it's really cool how you break this down to the simplest terms in terms of what your advertising is. It's paying for more exposure, more eyeballs. Mm -hmm. And so to your point, um, Going and optimizing towards sales growth is at the expense usually of profit. And I think, you know, that third variable might be, this is the way that I've explained it in the past too. It's like time. How quickly do you want yeah. to get to one or the other? And if it's a, you know, we have to be there next week, then it's definitely going to be at a major expense to the other side of the equation mm -hmm. versus next year. Maybe there's a, a, you know, some sort of a blend in terms of accomplishing both sales growth and profitability. But I think it's, yes. it's really important to really boil it down to the basics and what is it that your ad spend is actually doing? What is it that your primary goal is? And what is your time horizon for getting there? Absolutely. I would 100, 110% agree with that. And then also, like I said, we're going to be breaking this down on a per product level, which I promise you I'm getting into that next slide. Um, where you actually, a lot of times will have different goals based on product lines, which really, if you're moving to play a more sophisticated game with your advertising, that's where you want to end up is having different goals per product line. And also I tell clients this all the time. It doesn't have to be an all our strategy is really all or nothing. That's why when I say like, where do you fall on this line? A lot of times it's like, well, I really want to go more towards sales growth, but I can't hit above X number because because then I get unprofitable with this particular product or this product isn't a launch. So therefore I'm willing to lose a little bit of money to be able to gain the market share that I need to. And again, it's sort of, again, it's this dichotomy to be managed. I just wanted you to understand again, that the interactions or the push and pull between these two extremes, because that will help you make much more sophisticated decisions um, and not be so dissatisfied with a strategy. Because oftentimes when you're, really upset about a strategy being run it's typically because the strategy that you're running is on the polar opposite of where your goals are um be it sales growth or increasing profitability or maybe you're flip-flopping if you flip-flop between goals a lot you yeah. probably end up with like a really uh you end up with worse than both worlds most times very true cool all right let's get into the fun stuff well, this is my fun stuff, which is compiling the data. You're going to need two reports. So first, I'm going to go over, again, how to put together this report. And then we're going to talk about how you can use this report to analyze uh, your account as to what product lines you should be focused on. Um, so you're going to need two reports for this. Um, the first one, you're going to need a business report, specifically the detailed page sales and traffic by child item. Um, and then the second one, uh, I like downloading the products tab grid. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of manipulation of one of the data columns to be able to put these two together. The reason why I like downloading the products tab is because this contains both sponsored products and sponsored display um, advertising data in it. Now you can use the advertised product reports. Basically what we're looking to do is get our advertising data on a per child ASIN level um, so we can marry these two reports together. Um, note Two, a couple important things. One, the date ranges for these reports must be the same. Again, we're comparing apples to apples. It doesn't really matter um, how long a date range. Now, my personal preference typically is to look at like the last 30 days. Um, you might be looking at shorter date ranges. So for example, um, seeing as we had probably a wild performance swing happening probably about the 24th with ship time, you know, everyone kind of finishing up their Christmas shopping, you might want to take like a shorter snapshot because um, of more like recent trends, you want to see what's going on. Either way, all you have to make sure is that your business reports and whatever, again, you're using to get your advertising data is going to be apples to apples exactly the same. If you add a day here or there, you're not going to get accurate data. So that's accuracy is super important. The other thing to note is that this is a report is not going to include sponsored brand ad spend uh, or sponsored brands data whatsoever. So if you do have a significant investment in the sponsored brand ads, allocating sponsored brand ads, I'm sure you guys know it in intense wise, it's a whole formula uh, you got to really like dig into the calculations only because Amazon does not provide product level spend 
uh, for sponsored brand ads. That's the reason why we're not including it. It's not because I don't think it's a valid one to include. So just know, typically what I do is just to at least be aware of how much ad spend that is going to be excluded from this report we're generating. Um, you can take your total ad spend for, again, whatever date range you select, look at what your ad spend is for your sponsored brand ads, sponsored brand ad spend divided by some total. That just tells you what percentage you're excluding for the reports, you know, a little bit how you know off it might potentially be um so do be aware of that and there is also one pro tip when it comes to downloading the product ads i love digging around with reports and like testing and seeing if i can get stuff done um so there is a tip that even if you have up to thirty thousand SKUs or more in your account i've tested this you can actually download the product tab grid um now there's two things that you need to know to be able to do this. One is that um, you have to navigate to the last grid in um, the product tab. So you're going to have to, if you have, you know, again, 10,000, 100,000 skis, you're going to have to like click, click, and it, it's going to be a thing. Again, you don't have to download and then um, try and marry three different reports together, you're only going to have to marry two different reports together. So I still, even in larger accounts, like doing it this way. Um, the other thing that you want to know, and again, here's the hacky thing, because I went to the end of the product tab grid, or the, yeah, the products tab in one account, and like I hit the export button and it didn't work. And that was super weird. It didn't have all of the products downloaded in it. Um, but I did it in another account and it did work. So here's the thing is when you click next on this grid, and I would recommend expanding this up to, I think it goes up to 300 results. So you don't have as many things to click through. Um, when you click this little button here, you'll actually see a little loading tab. Um, it will load. You have to wait for each grid to fully load before you click to the next page. If you do that and then you get to the end and you hit this export, all of your product data will be included in there, um, which is kind of nice. Okay. So there's other information that's in the product tab that you might want to have on a pro product level. Again, this marries in sponsor display and sponsor product ads. Um, so this can be a nice report just to know how to download regardless. Let's see. Jay had a question. You factor in the 14-day attribution window when looking back at the 30-day window. There's always a source of frustration when taking present-day snapshots. Um, yeah, Jay, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, you kind of just have to take it as a whole, because if you're marrying in sponsored product ads and sponsored display ads, uh, sponsored product ads has a seven day look back window. Sponsored display ads has that 14 day look back window. What we found is that typically speaking, most of the sales and Ryan, maybe you have more context on this tend to happen same day in the advertising. Yes, there is a retroactive update, um, but the volumes, it's not even as high as like, say, a 50%, at least what we've found. There is marginal back updating to it. Yeah, I would say it, it might depend on what you're selling, uh, where you might have mm -hmm. a longer sure. attribution window, of course. But in general, um, even at, with IntentWise's own data, we've, we've analyzed this repeatedly. I typically try to leave like a 48 hour window. Yeah. So I, you know, if I'm downloading the report today, you know, I wouldn't want to look at data that's newer than January 9th, for example. So mm -hmm. like two days ago, and that should cover for 95% of brands, 95% of your orders, I would say, but Jay, you can go ahead and, and actually analyze this for yourself. If you wanted to look at, you know, today's data and then check it again in seven days and 14 days. How much did your overall sales improve or increase with that added attribution window? Um, and unless you're selling a very expensive product or a product that requires like a ton of uh, research or comparison shopping, my guess is that you would probably see 90% plus of those attributed ad sales within the first 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, I would say that's true. And the other thing to note is that if you're downloading a sponsored or a business reports data, those are typically about 48 hours behind anyways. And again, yeah. if we're comparing apples to apples, uh, fun trick. So this is showing the buy ASIN. It, up above this inside of, again, specifically Seller Central, you'll see the buy date. My favorite thing to do is to go into the buy date section of the business report scroll down to the very last day reporting because if you go into this uh, detail page sales and traffic by child item it will allow you to select up today's date 
But oftentimes those dates are actually, like, there's no data available. So if you download, like it would, it would be inaccurate because it's saying you can download today's date, but there's no uh, ac- or like updated data in those. So again, uh, Ryan has a great point on there and I appreciate you bringing it up about, you know, probably negating at least 48 hours from your data sources. Definitely. Yeah, that's a good pro tip on the uh, business reports by date too, to see when the most refreshed data is. And sometimes too, I've noticed like there will not be zeros there, but it's definitely not what your sales were. So just make sure that if you're going to look at that business reports by date and you're looking for the most refreshed day, that the numbers all match up to the previous days before it. Um, And there's not a huge discrepancy. No, that's a good tip as well. I appreciate it. Cool. Um, one last thing before we put together these reports, we're going to have to do a little bit of spreadsheet work. Um, that's because for whatever reason, honestly, it drives me crazy. Um, inside of the products, so this is the download of the products report tab. Um, it combines the ASIN and like the SKU in one thing with like a hyphen. It's really weird. Um, so all you have to do is use this spreadsheet formula left, you know, again, selecting the products uh, cell right here and then just do 10 characters and that will pull out the child ASIN for you. Um, but you do have to do that. Should take you two seconds. If you've done it once, you could do it in your sleep probably. All right. Now we got to combine the reports. Um, so some people like VLOOKUP or index plus match formulas. Doesn't matter. Basically what you're looking to do is take that business report. Oops, excuse me. You got to take that business report and you're going to have to pull over the ad data for each individual child ASIN, then we're going to be creating a pivot table um, that allows us to roll it up to the parent ASIN level. The reason why we're a huge fan of doing pivot tables, so we deal with a lot of brands where there's a lot of variations associated with the brands. Um, the thing is, and this is probably going to make us, I don't want to make us go too long on this uh, presentation, but there's some funkiness that happens if you look at totally costs, ad sale percentages, or uh, other kind of data like that on the child ASIN level when you're marrying in business reports and ad data, it has to do with the product attribution. Um, You can think something's performing not great when in fact, it's sort of like acting like a funnel to some of the other variations. So for that reason, and because traffic is again, directed on a listing level or a parent ASIN level, we chose to roll it up to that level to make the data smooth out a little bit. And then also to help us with accounts where we have hundreds of variations per listing, it helps us take a little bit uh, more concise action. So you're basically gonna sum up everything on each child ASIN. So again, using the business reports to look at ad spend, ad sales, ad orders, clicks, and ad impressions, again, on the child ASIN level. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pivot table off of the parent ASIN, which will be in that business report download. And again, we've married in the product tab ad data here. So we're gonna calculate the following and I'm gonna show you sort of a screenshot of what it looks like and then how we analyze it. Um, so you're gonna be pivoting to show total sales, again, on a per parent ASIN level. Uh, also, I like percentages of total sales ad spend, percentage of total ad spend, these are going to be pivotal to this analysis. Um, then you're going to look at things like ad sales, sessions, conversion rate, which uh, which is a unit session percentage, which if you're calculating this is uh, units ordered divided by sessions is how that's calculated in the business reports. Ad conversion rate, which is of course orders divided by clicks in the ads, cost per click, ad spend divided by clicks, a cost ad spend divided by ad sales, total A costs, total sales divided, no, ad spend divided by total sales, and what we call ad sale percentage, which is your ad sales divided by total sales. This tells you what percentage of my total sales is coming from my advertising. Um, So that's how you put together the report, and then we'll go over the analytics of it. Um, Is there any questions on that? I I have a quick question, Elizabeth, with um, when you create the pivot table, do you have to also recalculate all of those those formulas that you just mentioned um, because of the way that you're marrying the data together? Do you need to like, for example, CPC? um, Are you actually putting in that custom field to say, hey, you know, we have to do this by spend divided by clicks? You are. Yes. If you do averages, um, your data is not going to be as accurate. 
Um, we've had a couple of times where a team member, someone was putting together a report and they just did straight averages. Uh, whenever you're doing pivot tables, when at all possible, um, for the best accuracy, you always want to calculate it using the base data. That's a great point. And so, yeah, any anything that that is uh, any of these metrics that are derived from a formula, whether that's a percentage or you know a ratio, like CPC, a cost tacos, a lot of these are conversion rate. Even um, you don't want to rely on the default, which is to do an average or a sum of that when you mm -hmm. create a pivot table. You need to go back in and do that calculated field. Yep. Yeah, I mean, for these ones, like ad spend total sale, those are just sums. Sessions would be a sum because, again, that's like, you know, kind of to your point, the base data. Uh, I mean, you could take any report, like if you had just a random report, campaign manager download, or maybe your search term report, just out of, I mean, if you're like me, you just want to see what the differences are out of fun. You could take the average of, say, your cost per click and then try some of um been divided by some of clicks, those calculations are going to be wildly, you're going to be surprised at how different those calculations would be. So when at all possible, again, because we're interested in accuracy, when we're doing data analytics, uh, you want to make sure you do the calculated fields. Awesome. Cool. All right. This is what we've been building up to analyzing the data. This is the fun part. This is where you start walking away with like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. That's awesome. Or that's what we're that's what I'm gunning for in this presentation. Um, all right, so we're gonna look at two things here. Um, so I'm gonna be taking all of these columns that maybe we talked about all the stuff we're looking at and we're gonna be grouping it into two kind of subsections. So we're looking at the impact of each product line. When I say I'm using product line, listing, parent, ASIN interchangeably here. Um, we're looking at their impact on the um, total sales and the ad spend. And then what we're doing is we're saying, okay, what is the impact of the products? And then we're going to take a look at what the ad, if what I'm calling ad efficiency of each product's spend is basically like how much of a product, how much is this making up in my catalog? And then how is it performing is what we're using this report to find. All right. So here you can see, this is like a screenshot of what this may look like. Again, you can see the parent ASINs right here. Um, so you can see like, here we have percentage of total. Now, percentage of total is like, I think in 2023 was like my new favorite thing to look at because a lot of us will go into our business reports, right? And we'll sort by highs to lows. Okay, this is my, you know, I know this is my best seller. The question is the best seller by how much? And fun fact, this is a little bit outside the realm of this presentation, but like if you took um, your percentage of total and mapped it over each month, you will quickly find where your seasonality comes in. So in January, this particular product makes up 15% of my total catalog. In February, that shifts to 25% and then down. And you'll, you actually, you could start to see some really interesting trends emerge when you start using percentage of total because it tells you, okay, this is the biggest, but by how much? Um. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at, okay, this particular, and this is actually, I think, from an audit that we did. Um, this product is making up 24% of my total sales volume. I'm investing about 19.5% of my total ad spend into this product. So again, we're looking at the account impact. Um, this particular product is doing about 15% of total sales. I'm... Um, investing about 18% of total ad spend. Now these kind of changes here, meaning like, okay, uh, let me see, 1.6% 1 1 of my total sales volume is going here. I'm investing 13% of my total ad spend. That's pretty significant. Now, if you are looking at say a product launch, those types of, I wanna say like discrepancies, but differences, that would be, you would expect to see those kind of things. But you will not believe how many times I, I pull up this for brands when we audit and they'd be like, I'd be like, oh, is this like, is this in a product launch? Is it? They're like, no, that's one of our product lines that like we had no idea that was going on in the account. And so very quickly, you might start to see, again, we're looking for impact here. And then what we're looking at is ad efficiency. So when I say ad efficiency, again, what is the performance of that ad spent? So we're looking at a cost, total a cost. Again, what we call ad sale percentage, ad 
uh, add sales divided by total sales. And then another thing that I like to look at, <clears throat> and the only reason I know this to be true is because I've audited so many brands and I've like taken this view and then dug down into the actual per product advertising and notice discrepancies. I I note this as more of a trigger. Um, but whenever your ad conversion rate is lower than your unit session percentage, especially if it's lower by a significant margin, that either means one of two things. You are investing in ad targets that are not converting well for your product, or you might be going up funnel a little bit. Um, so there could, again, very similar to where, okay, this could be a product launch. There might be contextual reasons as to why those things are happening. But if I had, so for this particular product, most significant ad spend here, this was an established product. I'm saying, why is our ad conversion rate 15 points below? Because we're being very intentional. And ideally, we should be investing most of our ad spend into the things that are converting well for our products. And that's why you get that better conversion rate. Now, it does depend on um, the space. We deal a lot in clothing where the conversion rates are very, very low. But because we're so intentional with what we're targeting with our advertising, very commonly for us, our ad conversion rate is double our unit session percentage. That doesn't always happen. But again, it depends on how bottom of the funnel conversion rate focus you're running it. Um, but again, it's just a, it's a clue. And again, on a per product level. Um, so this sort of view, if I was just looking at it immediately off the bat, I would say, okay, the thing that we're spending the most on has you know a good total a cost it's below our averages here so this one's fine um if i had to find something to fix well then most likely i need to fix this particular product right here because that discrepancy is and again unless we're in a product launch phase which still even in product launch that's quite significantly high total a cost to be dealing with um you can also find places of under investment so for example, this particular product's driving 22% of total sales. We're investing about 14% of our total ad spend here. And our total A cost is like 9.3%. Now remember how I was telling you there might potentially be ways to have your cake and eat it too in terms of sales growth and profitability. This is how you find it. Um, so what you do is you're looking on a per product level. And again, advertising is about spend management, um, spend efficiency. And if I was looking at the overall account, my directives are very, very specific, right? If I needed to say, lower this total A cost to a 12%, okay, I need to get rid of, you know, 2.25% of my ad spend. So the okay, total sales, which two point, you know, where, where do I take this ad spend? This is how much I need to decrease it to be able to hit my objectives. And this is a hard part, still, I mean, the, still maintain this total sales impact, right? Well, just that sort of objective, it's pretty ambiguous. Where do I focus? Where do I lower it? Where do I improve it? Well, then you make a chart like this and you say, okay, I need to improve. If I'm already spending 13% and only making 1.6%, there's probably a good chunk of change in here that's highly inefficient that I could probably get rid of. Here, I'm already dealing with the 16%. There's probably a good chunk of ad spend here that's inefficient that I could fix. If I'm looking for sales growth and I'm trying not to increase the total A cost too much, well, this product's obviously doing very well and our investments are doing very well. Is there somewhere in here that I could maximize, especially seeing only about 24% of our total sales volumes coming from advertising? There's probably places I can work to push this product more. And that's how, again, you would use this sort of ad report um, to be able to make, again, more efficient strategic moves. So then the question is not, okay, where in the account do I lower ad spend? It's going, where in the ad structure for this one product do I lower ad spend? where in the structure for this one product um, can I look to generate higher organic ranking? Yeah, I think this is awesome too, because this is not generally the way, you know, looking at it at the product level that Amazon presents the information to you. Obviously you showed us the steps to get here. And I think that's, what's really important is it does depend on your account structure, your campaign structure, and yeah. then going through these extra steps 
setting those goals beforehand so you know what to look for here. And I think you've given us plenty of great examples in terms of, well, if your goal is growth, look for those products that have maybe an, uh, a lower ratio of ad spend to, compared to the total sales that they're driving. And, and the opposite would be true for profitability. So this is fantastic. Um, I see we have a question here, Elizabeth, from Maurice. Um, actually, two questions now. So the first one is, tacos here would be understated if it doesn't include SB. Um, that's true. I'll let you comment on this too, Elizabeth, if you have something to add. I think it's a, it's really a personal choice. Um, you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier that you can sort of calculate what your overall investment is for sponsored brands compared to your account and see if it's a large percentage of your spend, then you would probably want to include it here in some way. Um, you know, one way that some brands do that is they'll just divide their total sponsored brand ads across either all child ASINs or all child ASINs that are included in a sponsored brand ad whether that's evenly or you can weight it based on their overall spend, it's not going to be an exact number, but at least then you'll be including that spend in your tacos. Um, so I, I think it's a decision that you just need to make based on how much you're spending on sponsored brands relative to the other ads. Would you agree yeah. with that, Elizabeth? No, I would 100% agree with that. And how you described um, sort of parsing out the ad spend on a per product level, that's exactly how you do it. Um, and I actually appreciate that in TechWise, you guys are so transparent about how those calculations are done because up until Amazon fully releases, um, that and fingers crossed, I don't know why, like, <laughs> uh, goodness. And I, I sure you guys are going to be one of the first ones to discover it and hopefully post about it somewhere, um, for the rest okay. of us. But yeah, no one is going to have. 100% accurate total A cost until Amazon releases per product ad spend for sponsored brand ads. Just yeah. full disclosure right there. Yep. Unless you're just not running sponsored brands, I guess, in which case. There, well, or in that case, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you do have accuracy. Um, one other question from Jay. He says, are you running these campaigns based on overall client account goals or at a break-even A cost at the product group level? Good question. Um, every campaign should have a slightly different target depending on the um, the strategy of the campaign. So, okay. for example, um, if we have a, I'm just going to get into the weeds, but this is where the fun stuff goes because I'm pretty much at the end of the presentation, so we can we can jive on this. Um, if you Really, a lot of ACOS goes into cost per click management, to your point, spend management and cost per click. If you are going after, say, a top keyword that's a little bit more expensive, sometimes if you're running that for the break even or even a profitable ACOS, that doesn't allow you to put bids high enough to be able to really enter into that ad auction and play that game of trying to rank on those specific search terms. And that's where you can run into some issues um, by only ever focusing on profitability on a per campaign level. Now, should we be focusing on profitability on a per product level? Absolutely. Um, so if you're looking at this view, I would want to see profitability and I would want to see, um, again, this ad efficiency aligned with what it is that we're targeting on these per product levels. But then when you take that into um, sort of the ad structure, there are certain search terms or search terms, keywords, rankings, that we would give a little bit more leeway um, in terms of our ACOS targets. On the flip side, there will be some. So for example, auto campaigns, there's very limited strategic reasons as to why you would want to get aggressive with auto campaigns. But my personal opinion is you should never be getting so aggressive with your auto campaigns that you run yourself into unprofitability. We'd probably even pull back even further um, just due to the impact on ranking and ad spend control and some nuances there. Is the uh, Do you have a few more slides to go through, Elizabeth? Um, I think that's really it other than I was okay. just going to say it's all about making the strategic moves, again, on a per product level. Um, and we found again, sort of that view. And then we were just opening it up to any and all questions at this point, if anyone had anything pertaining to the presentation or, um, anything Amazon advertising, <laughs> I'm game. Yeah. While we're waiting to see if there's any questions, um, Elizabeth, do you mind introducing your company jungler and what you guys do for uh, a few minutes here or a few seconds? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Yeah. So, um, co-founder, 
Uh, we are an Amazon ad agency that focuses specifically on helping upper six figure and seven figure brands get to that eight figure mark. So ones who are interested to scale. The one thing we've really discovered, I think in 2022, we knew, and then definitely going to 2023, our views got really solidified. And there's a lot of ways you can fumble your way into the upper six figure, even seven figure ranks with a really poor ad structure. Um, the thing is when you're looking to make these strategic moves, like I'm saying, like pull back on this product, push this product, you really want to dig in and get granular with what you're doing. Um, you need to have an ad structure that supports that. The there's like, I think there's a lot of sellers that think, oh, poor ad structure means poor performance. That's not actually the case. And that's the infuriating thing um, is that a lot of times a really poor ad structure can have some really good performance. The reason why a poor ad structure is not ideal is because it does not allow you to that whole point of going back to advertising is really about spend control. It doesn't allow you to have um, really good spend control levers in place. Um, so we're really, again, focusing in on allowing our clients to get more strategic with what they're trying to do with their catalog to, again, facilitate that growth. Awesome. Well, um, jungler.com, if you have more questions or uh, are curious about what they do over there. And uh, I know Elizabeth Green is also very active on LinkedIn, so feel free to mm -hmm. Uh, connect with her there um, or myself. Doesn't look like we have any other questions. So um, I think we, we had, you know, obviously this is a very informative presentation. Um, feel free to reach out to either myself or Elizabeth if you do want to dig deeper into how to do this middle gap analysis. Um, and when you exit the webinar today, you will be asked to complete just a short survey of five questions about today's presentation, the content. Um, so please do give us your feedback. It'll help us make these sessions even more informative and educational for everybody. But with that, I think we can go ahead and, and end this session today. So thank you again, Elizabeth. Um, it was so great to have you. And uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks so much. I appreciate you having me on. Definitely. All right. Thank you, everybody.